never enough. Never enough. We're going today to start on a trajectory of new stuff. Not technically new because we know there's nothing new under the sun. Right? Clarissa? <laughs> <laughs> Nothing new under the sun. I will tell you that I, where, where I am here in the last, I don't know, 60 days or something, there's definitely a teaching, we're, we're, we're in a teaching moment because I believe that I need to teach some things even though I do a lot of teaching, but I'm talking about teaching some things to get this trajectory on course. And on Tuesday nights, I have been teaching on prayer. And I'm thinking that this Tuesday night, we're going to pray without any teaching, just pray and then go back to the teaching. We'll see how that goes. Uh, that's the truth. I remember both Benita and Brianna sharing in the past when they, when they did the offering and the giving, and they both used the same analogy at times, but I remember one, you cannot get something as long as your hand is closed. And you cannot receive and hear a lot of the things that are taught and preached and ministered if you're not willing to let go of the past. And I did the best I knew how. I followed the best out there in praying. And now I've come to realize it was incomplete. And if you're not careful, it'll bother you that, wow, all that time I did it this way, I don't consider it wrong. The Lord blessed me. He taught me. He used that particular time frame. Uh, it was not in vain. It may not have been most productive, but it was not in vain. And if you're not willing to, to relearn prayer, you will continue to have no results. And I was in a conversation with Diane. We were talking about something probably a month ago. And we were talking about, we were talking about different things in the government and all that. But there is something that they do that I was not really familiar with. It was called cloud seeding. And cloud seeding is they cannot generate, they cannot make rain. But if the atmosphere already has precipitation in it, they can enhance it. They can't go to a dry desert place and create rain. But if there is moisture and there, there is things already existing in that atmosphere, they do that in the mountains to make it snow more so that the runoff creates more water, which increases, uh, it increases the water level. So if there's areas, so they can't go in and just make rain, but they do, and, and it's pretty interesting what they use, some pyrotechnics and different things, but they go in and they literally sow into the atmosphere that creates more snow and rain. So this series I am titling Cloud Seeding. And if you don't get results, they, it, God can't go into the barren place and create a lot of the stuff that you are needing unless there's already some elements there. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? So I have about three or four things in my, three or four messages, but I had to back up with this one to set the groundwork for where we want to go with this. 
So let's look at, and this is not on your notes, but let's look at Matthew 9.23. Daniel, did y'all get the account? Okay. Now we're going to come back to this. I just asked them that they get the account. Now, you, you, you'd already answered it. Well, here later this week. You hadn't heard from God yet. See, we don't like saying stuff. This, we're going to get into this a lot to this. But here's the thing. We don't like saying what we cannot see. We do not like saying what we do not feel. We do not like saying what we do not have in possession. The word says we walk by faith, not by sight. And as long as you can't say what you have, more than likely you'll never have what you want. And you know what people's going to tell you? Well, I'm just a realist. No, you're not a realist. Because the realist is God's word. Well, I'm not going to say something that's not true. So you're saying your sickness is true. You're saying your sin is true. I'm forgiven. You can't look at me and say what I am. I know what I am because of what God says I am, not because what my background tells me I am, what my past is, what I possess what people say about me, that is not who I am. It may be who I am to people, but it's not who I am to God. We are in a, we are entering, it's already here, but we are, I'm going to lead us into a dimension where you have the opportunity to absolutely floor people with what God wants to do in your life. I'm not saying I'm here and you're here. I'm not saying that, but you need to get this in order to see the evidence of it. Does that make sense what I'm saying? So Matthew 9, 23, I don't have uh, someone read it. It's not on the back, just so you know. And when Jesus came to the ruler's house and saw the flute players, I may have the wrong scripture. And that's on me. I have 923, Matthew. It's the scripture that says, if thou can believe. Look, look on your phone. I looked it up on, on a phone. Let's, I just want to get it right. Mark. Mark jumped it. Mark, Mark, it's Mark 923. And when Jesus said, you say to me, if you can do anything while all things are... And Jesus said, you say to me, if you can do anything while all things can be are possible to him who believes. What translation is that? It looked like the message. Huh? Let's do King James Version. Jesus said it to them. If... I'm going to talk to you one day about if. If is either a conclusion, a conclusion or a condition. You got to know which it is. But he says, if you can believe. Bertha, y'all, you got to read that. If you can believe. Some things are possible. All things are possible. Whatever is not possible or is possible or occurring possibilities in your life, it is because you do not believe. Okay, read the passion. Do we got the passion? Jesus said to him, what do you mean? I 
I can tell we're not going to get very far today. <laughs> None of this is even. In... What do you mean if? What do you mean if? The only if is if you can believe. If you can believe, all things are possible to you. We want to, religion's going to make you take this scripture and say, well, if it's God's will. Well, you got to know this. You got to know that. You got to know this. It, 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 it can't handle this. And, and I'm just... I'm just going to tag this a little bit, and I said I probably wouldn't go touch it. I don't know of anybody that's getting right now more hell than Creflo Dollar. But I want to tell you, I am 100% with Creflo Dollar. He's a man of God. He's done well. I, I love him. But it's amazing that when something comes out and it rocks the world or rocks the religious community, that everybody comes out and say, oh, now that he's a, now he is a heretic, a heretic. Now I'm not going to get into the tithe issue because it doesn't matter what the tithe is or is not. It has nothing to do with your salvation. It has nothing to do with any of that. It is a byproduct. You cannot be a heretic off a byproduct. And if you thought he was a heretic now, where have you been the last 30 years? I'm going to tell you what it is. And I'm not teaching on the tithe because I don't even, I, that, that's almost beneath me to have to teach on the tithe. But let me tell you what I believe about it. It is men and women who are fearful that they can't make it without the mandate of the tithe. We can't keep the ministry up. We can't keep the lights on. We can't do anything. Well, then the tither is your source and not God. So I care nothing about the tither because that's not my source. God will use the tither, but I am not dependent on whether you tithe or not. You can ask Bree. I don't look to see if you tithe because when you all quit tithing, you can stay home and watch someone on television and I'm going to keep serving the Lord. You do not keep me alive. So all the people that are fearful about, he said that, you know, don't tithe. He didn't say don't tithe, but when he said the tithing is, is Old Testament kind of law, but you got to get into Abraham and some other things. I'm not against it. I'm, I, got my, I got some things on it. But my point is, when you become fearful, you will attack. If there's one thing about the good news that only the people call the good news salvation. They call the good news evangelism. The good news is total well-being. It is total forgiveness, total righteousness, total prosperity, and total healing. And, and religion has made it about salvation and you getting to heaven. And it's not about your salvation. And it's nothing about you getting to heaven. God, I hate to tell you this, and if it offends you, so be it. God really don't want you in heaven. That's finished. He doesn't want you in heaven. He wants you to make earth like heaven. And you want to go up there so you can avoid doing what he's told you to do because you don't know his will. You don't want the responsibility. You don't know how to cloud seed. So we're going somewhere in the day's message, and then we're going somewhere physically. We're going somewhere spiritually. We're going there. Now, I'm going there with or without you. Some of you will not go, and it's okay. I see you in heaven, but I'm not. I'm a cloud seeder. Okay, we're going to look at this. If you can believe all, th all things, all things are possible. 
That is just fascinating to me. It, there, there's no, is this if a conclusion or is it a condition? Faith is a requirement. Now, if someone comes out and says, you don't have to have faith to go to heaven, you don't have to have faith to believe in God, then we got some, that, that's not a byproduct. The word says without faith, it is impossible to please God. Impossible. Is this back TV not working? Okay. Okay. Was it tested prior to? Faith is a requirement. The world was not made from nothing. Okay? The world was not made from nothing. I started, I started to bring something in this morning, and it slipped my mind. Elohim, that's the word, that's the name for creator, our creator. You know God has multiple names. God is not his name. Elohim is the God of creator. You got Rapha, you got Nisi, you got Sikanu, you got El Shaddai, you got all kinds of names, Hashim. You got all kinds of names for the name of God because he did unique things and it created his names. So Elohim created what he wanted, but it was not out of nothing. You do not get to just pray and have stuff. That's not how God created it. Elohim spoke to what he wanted to come to pass. Are y'all with me? We're going to Genesis 1 here. What Elohim spoke came forth from what he spoke to. Did y'all get me? What Elohim spoke came forth, not just out of thin air, but what he spoke to. So my question to you is, what are you speaking to, to bring about what you want? Are y'all with me? So in Genesis 1.20, someone read Genesis 1.20. And someone read, if we can do this fast enough, because if not, it's going to slow me up. Genesis, I don't have a TV on the back. Genesis one twenty four, and we're going to look at Genesis one twenty six. So Genesis one twenty, God, someone has it? Okay, God wanted what? He wanted fish and birds. And living creatures. So did he, what did he speak to? Feathers and claws? What did he speak to? He spoke to water. Does birds come from water? In Genesis 1, 2, and 3, it said that God saw darkness. And he, and he spoke to what? Darkness. So my question is, what are you speaking to? Because, see, if you're not careful, you will speak to the thing that you want instead of the thing that what you want comes from. Okay, 24. And God spoke to what? He spoke to the the land. He spoke to the soil. He spoke to the dirt. He spoke to the soil and the dirt and got something. So we saw in Genesis 1, 3 or 1, 2, 3, he spoke to darkness and he got light. He spoke to water and got birds and living creatures. He spoke to soil. Y'all with me now? He spoke to soil and got stuff. Now let's look at verse... 26. Why? 
what did God speak to? Himself. That's good. Y'all have to think. I know you're on the short bus this morning. You're on the short bus this morning. God spoke to the water. He spoke to the darkness and got light. He spoke to the soil and got animals. He spoke to the water and got something. But when he wanted man, he had to speak to himself. You came not from the... Listen, we are playing, man was made from dirt. You were not made from dirt. Your body might have been made from dirt, but your spirit came from God. In fact, if you read the scripture a little more, it says you are a little God. Tuesday night, we were talking about the King of kings and Lord of the lords. Who is the kings? You are a king. And kings do not beg, plead, whine, complain, Ask for anything because they know they have access to it and they decree what they want. And I'm telling you the reason America and the world is in the condition it is in. The reason your family's in the condition it is in. The reason your finances is in the condition it is in. The reason your marriage is in the condition it is in. You don't know what to speak to to get what you want. Oh, huh? No one can lay hands on you. No one can counsel you. No one can fix what you fail to speak to. And if you notice... He created everything before he created man because everything he created previously was for man to have to subdue. What are you subduing? What do you have in subjection to you? Okay, we got we go build here. Are you with me? Are, are, we, are we on track here? So where does Yahweh or where does he inhabit? Where does he live? Oh, I know. Heaven. How religious. Oh, he lives in heaven. Where does the word say? I said this, I said this, I think Tuesday night. Your mouth is the key to everything. So where does he live? Okay, you got your scriptures. Let's look at Isaiah 59, 15. For thus says the high and lofty one, he who inhabits eternity. Now let's talk a little bit about eternity. Y'all with me as I build here? Eternity has no time. Eternity has no past or future. You're always in the moment. God never created you to live in time. He created you to live in the moment. And time was to be your servant. But when Adam fell, he fell from eternity to time. And time has become your master. Everything you do, you decide, well, do I have time? How long will this take? How long? And you try to put your miracles and your needs from God on your timetable when he doesn't work off your time. If you put time on what you need from God, you're going to be disappointed because you can't put time on God. Your past should never be an issue and you don't ever worry about your future because you're not promised tomorrow is what scripture says. You must learn to live in the moment of right now, which is eternity. Hello, y'all with me? We worry about tomorrow. What are you going to do? How long is this going to take? 
How long do I have to read the Bible? How long? How long? We, everything. Time has become your master. And to walk in the kingdom of God, time must become your servant. And you must disengage. I'm not saying you become late for work or any of that. I'm saying you must disengage from time being the master over your life. God is waiting on people who will not be constrained by time, but who will live in the moment of right now. If you live in the moment of right now, you're living in a miraculous state. Okay, y'all with me? When did time actually appear? We're not going to spend a lot of time. If you read, time actually appeared on the fourth day. That's when the atmosphere was created. That's when, once you go outside the atmosphere, you get out of time. Because atmos- time is for us. So y'all with me? I, I just, I want to, see, if you're not careful, you will live your whole life by time. You will, you will speak by time. Well, I don't have enough time. This takes too long. And we, right now, we're concerned about how long is this going to take God I want to tell you based on scripture that the longest you should ever have a problem is 24 hours. Now I'm not saying your problems are going to only go last 24 hours. I'm going to say based on scripture, you can resolve every conflict in 24 hours if you believe. I know we don't understand this. This is called what I'm teaching you right now is what people call hyper something. When you believe in healing, that's hyper healing. If you believe in too much grace, that's hyper grace. Hyper this. It's too much. That is right. It is too much. God is too much for you to understand. If you could understand him, you would be, you would be the fourth and not the trinity. You would be the fourth part of the trinity if you knew how God functioned. It is beyond you and I understanding. And that's how all the denominations and how all religion works. People get to the place where they cannot understand it anymore. And they say, I'm staying right here. I don't understand tongues. It's of the devil. Why? It's because you can't go further. I can't understand this. I can't understand that. I don't believe in prosperity. I don't believe in this. It's because you have come to a place where your mind, that's the limits of your mind. And now you are stopped there and you decide to make a religion. Or a denomination. So Genesis 1, 26 and 28. God spoke, let us make human beings in our image. Make them reflecting our nature. The nature, you have the nature, right? So they can be, or we, so they can be what? Responsible for everything that I created. And you know what we have to do? We complain about the, the, the green, what is it, the new green deal or whatever. You're complaining about it when you would be subduing what God's told you to do. You wouldn't have to have someone who is not a believer to try to make rules to help be responsible for society. You have a responsibility to take care of the earth. And if you fail to take care of it, someone will come in with some high-minding nonsense to take care of it, and you complain about it when you would have had a plan already to take care of it. God created human beings. He created them what? Godlike. Godlike. I'm telling you, I would say that almost no one in this room, you ever look in the mirror and you see yourself godlike. And when you start seeing yourself godlike, you start talking godlike, you start decreeing godlike, and then you start getting godlike results. But if you speak human like and human emotions, you get human issues. And you get upset, they just think they're God. I am not God, but I am a little God. I'm like him. I'm like, I'm a chip off the block, if you want to use that term. You are, listen, if you want answers from God's word that you read about to manifest in your life, you have to speak like God. That is why he wants you to renew your mind so you have the mind of Christ so you can speak like God. 
So when I asked Daniel and Bree, did you get the account? Well, it's coming. Well, it's this. Well, it's that. When they came to a Lazarus and Lazarus was in the tomb, well, I don't know if he's coming out. We'll find out next week. Listen, reflecting God's nature. Oh, that's money. Where'd that come from? Praise the Lord. I, I didn't even know where it came from. I only how I picked it up. Listen, reflecting God's nature, he created them male and female. You don't see transgender in here. I'm sorry. When you think any other type of gender is other than male and female, you are outside the realm of God. Let me pause right here. I have these moments that my brain goes to mush. So on Thursday, the, church, the Archbishop of the Church of England, the Archbishop of the Church of England came out. He's like the Pope. Or so does, he's, like the, he's like the apostle of the, of the whatever denomination. He came out in England and he said that we as the church can no longer define a woman. Now, let me tell you what I do. I print all this stuff so I can have a hard copy. I don't want anybody to take it and say, prove it. I, I, I prove it. He came out. He said, there is no longer, we can no longer define male. My mind shuts down. So I'm over at Harris Teeter. And I just stopped. Stop. I said, hey, we don't need to exchange names here. We need to talk. I went to men. I went to women. I said, the Archbishop of England just said that we can no longer define a woman. And I need to know what kind of people live around me that think this way because I don't need them. And I need to know, are you one of them? First one said, that's the craziest stuff I ever heard. We have two dogs, but I don't know whether they're male or female. So I went to the second, and then I was driving out, and there was a, a, a lady there, and I said, I need to ask you a question. I said, I'm not, I know this is a weird question. We don't need to exchange names. I just need to know, can a woman be defined? She said, we're living in a whole different new generation. But she said something most powerful. She said, I am trying to be open. Listen to what I'm saying. That's what gets you in trouble. Because you haven't settled yet what you believe. And as long as you are opening to other things rather than what God says, you begin to move. Hello. There is no moving. God said in Genesis 1, I made male and female. I, I would have probably be in jail because I started to tell everybody, pull your pants down so I can see what you is. Because I can tell you by looking without any degree, without any, anything else, I can tell with my eyes whether you are a man or a woman. I don't care how you feel. I don't care if you shave under your arms. I don't care if you shave your legs. I don't care if you wear makeup. All I need to do is just look in one place and I can tell whether you are a male and female. My question is, what has happened to people that they cannot tell anything anymore? And see, we don't want to say anything, but I have to go around and ask people. I'm going to take a whole day off from work and just go around and ask people. I want to know, are you a woman or are you a man? Remember the movie with Crocodile Dundee when he was in the bar? Okay, I just need to know who I was talking to. <laughs> this message is a long one, I can tell you right now. So let's go a little bit further. It says, reflecting God's nature, 
He created them male and female. God blessed them. Is this good? He blessed them. What did he bless them to do? Look at what it says. He said, I bless you, prosper, reproduce, fill the earth, and take charge. That's what he blessed you and I to do. So my question, whenever, when you walk around and say, I'm blessed and highly favored of the Lord. Well, let me see your banking account. Let me see your marriage. Let me see some stuff. Let me see your car. Because you are not blessed if you're not able to reproduce. You're not blessed if you're not fulfilled. You're not blessed if you're not prospering. You're not blessed. That is not God's blessing. It's religious talk. Listen. Take charge and be responsible. So what is the blessing of God? What is that? How would you sum up the blessing of God? The blessing is a creative force. It's not just, I bless you. It is a creative force. When he says, I bless them, he's... Built into the blessing is a creative force. It is to bring about in our lives these four things. To be fruitful. What does fruitful mean? It means to bring out. Something should be brought out of you. It means to multiply. It means you should be increasing and expanding. Do you realize we're... We, I don't have my phone, but I don't have a Apple One. I'm a 13. Is there more out now? Well, what happened? How, how do I get a 13? Apple decided to multiply. They decided to expand. They excited. They, they decided to increase. So they went from 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 to 13. I'm sure it's not the end. Some of us is still stuck at salvation. Hello? And then it means to replenish. What does that mean? It means to renew and refill. It's a constant, it's a constant moving. And then the last one is subdue it. Bring into subjection. Bring into cultivation. Bring it about to oversee, to tame, to manage. So my question to you is, what are you managing? If you're not doing any of these things, you have abdicated your responsibility. And anything you abdicate is like the law of thermodynamics. Anything you abdicate or when you dig a hole, something's going to fill that hole. When you decide not to, not to do these four things under the blessing, the enemy comes in and takes over. The church has abdicated, Christians have abdicated their responsibility, and now we have people that have stepped up to the plate to rule the earth where you, and I'm pointing to you and to me, have failed to do what God's called you to do. Let me help you out, and I'm not against education. You do not need one degree to do what God's called you to do. Now, I bless you for your degrees. Listen, I had the biggest laugh with Carissa the other day. If you heard her story, how God has blessed her. And I said, girl, you know you're not qualified. <laughs> and that wasn't meaning bad. But what she was doing, she was not qualified. She got promoted and moved around that you would say, honestly, you would look around and say, how in the hell did that happen? What is the, what is the school coming to? But I'm telling you that you can be looking for a job and you don't have to put it in somewhere that someone will leave your application in the bottom of the drawer and when the new company come in and they find the paper and say, wonder who this is. I'm telling you, you can go to bed dumb and wake up smart tomorrow. I can show you that in Scripture. It's not a metaphor. It's the truth. 
Now listen, let's go a little bit further here. Not a little bit. We got a lot further to go here. That clock is not right. 19 minutes? That's wrong. Okay. Well, we're going by 19 minutes. That's all I'm going by. The, the devil is a lie. The sound people are lying back there. We're 19 minutes. Elohim took the worst conditions, darkness, chaos, and disorder, and turned the worst conditions into a garden. So when God gave you and I the rule and the reign and the blessing, He is saying you can turn any unruly situation into an oasis. Hello? Y'all with me? So let's look at Ezekiel 36, 33 and 36. God spoke. Message of God, the master. On the day I scrub you clean from your filthy living, I also make your cities livable. The ruins will be rebuilt. The, neglect, the, the neglected land will be worked again. No longer overgrown with weeds and thistles and worthless in the eyes of passerby. People will exclaim, why this weed patch has been turned into a garden of Eden. Hello. Hello. What in your life is a weed patch? Your workplace is a weed patch. Your marriage is a weed patch. Your health is a weed patch. Your friends are a weed patch. You just, you live in a weed patch. And the ruined cities smashed into oblivion are now thriving. The nations around you that are still in existence will realize that I, God, rebuild the ruins and replant the empty waste places I, God, said it, and so I will do it. So my question to you is this, and write this one down. And that is, do you believe what you feel and see, or do you believe what God says? Because what God says, He says, I will make it come to pass. Now, I want to tell you, we, because of time, we fail to believe what God says. He's not on your timetable. It's not working fast enough. It's not coming around. So the children of Israel, they were, in the, they were wandering in the wilderness. And they came to a place where they needed some water. How did God get them water? From a rock. How do you get water from a rock? Now put yourself in a situation to speak to a rock. In your 2022 intellectual mindset, if the prophet told you to speak to the rock, you would say, you're an idiot. Now, I'm not getting into the first time the rock. You know why the first time the rock, he was hit with the rod. You know why he was hit with the rod, right? No, the first time he hit, he, he hit the rock, he hit the rock with a rod. Why did he do it? God told him to do it, but why did God tell him? I, 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 this is another rabbit trail right here. Why did God tell him to do it? I, I got to get you to know the word. Yeah, but why did he hit the rock? Everything in the Old Testament is a shadow of everything in the New Testament. The rod hitting the rock, who's the rock? Christ. The rod, hitting, the rod hitting the rock was Christ being crucified. The reason when he hit the rock the second time, God judged him because you can't hit Christ twice. He died once and for all. Wow. That's a whole other story. I had time to talk about that. Because you think because God did it once one way. No, it's because he did it once one way doesn't mean he's going to do it the same way twice. God, it was a picture type. The rock is a picture type of Christ. Upon this rock, I will build my church. The reason he hit the rock the first time, it was a picture type of Christ coming as the Lamb of God who will be slain for our sins. The second time, he allowed his frustration and anger to do the same thing. And God said, I didn't tell you to do that. I told you to speak to it. Once Christ died on the cross, no longer do you have to hit the enemy. You speak to it. Oh my God. Y'all not with me. Y'all not with me. 
See, that's why eye for eye and tooth for tooth were done away with because no longer do you have to go after your adversaries. You speak to your adversaries. And see, we want to figure out how to get back at our adversary when all you have to do is speak what God says and you speak to the situation and you can turn that situation into what God says it is. I mean, I mean, I'm all up in the word here. Now, I know some of you are liking it and some of you think it's good and some of you, but right now, all I'm giving you is information until it becomes revelation in your life. You go say, oh, that's a good word, but I'm here to tell you and my purpose is here to get you to get this so you can start turning things around in your life, in your family, in your children, in your workplace. The church has lost, and I don't even like using the church because the Church of England come out, and I'm not part of that church. Let me throw another one out. Three denominations came out in the last week. The Episcopalian, the Lutheran, and the Methodist came out, and they said, we are in agreement that the pro-life agenda is demonic. Now, let me ask you something. You know what pissed me off? Get off Creflo's dollar back, Creflo dollars back, because no one really cares about the tithe in the sense of what you call an a heretic. And why don't you speak to people that can't define a woman and speak to people who cause pro-life and a demonic agenda and start really separating the church from goats and sheep? Not one person come out and said anything about any of those two articles. And some of you may not even heard them yourself. I'm telling you, I am not part of the Western church. I am, I am a temple that is connected to the vine that Holy Spirit lives in. But I, please do not connect me with the church. I'm probably anti-church. Western church of America, I am anti-Western church. anti and about everything that the church has taught, I'm anti. I know y'all like, oh my gosh. No, 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 notice. He gave him a rock to get water. We, religion has turned us into people who love to talk like the hypocrites. You know, it says that hypocrites love to pray. says they love to pray they love to hear themselves pray religion has turned the american church into people that are either prayerless or they love to pray okay listen and we have lost our creative imagination because god gave a rock in order to get water out of it in the we just read that he created trees Do you read nowhere in the Bible that he created a chair? He gave you a tree, and out of your creativeness of God, you can take a tree and make a chair. You can take a tree and make a pencil. You can take a tree. Hello, are you with me? Nowhere did he make a computer, but he gave you the elements to make a computer. He gave you the ore to be able to ore and mine the earth so that you can mine and and take the, the iron out of the soil so you can make swords. And because the religion has made us impotent in our creativity, we no longer think about how big things we can do for God. We ask God to do it for us. He's not giving you a chair. He's not giving you computers. And He's not giving you money. He will give you the creative idea of how to create stuff in order for it to be a blessing on earth. And you want a politician to fix it. Ephesians 3.10 says the church is going to be the fixer. God's the creator and the creators go fix it. Not the Green New Deal, not your politician, and not your vote. Mm. 
Psalm 72, 18. Blessed be the Lord God, the God of Israel, who alone does wondrous things. We don't use this word very often. Wondrous is W-O-N-D-R-O-U-S. That word wondrous means inexhaustible. It means someone who can do what no one else can do. And see, we will pray about something and then in a little while because of time, we will stop praying about it and go to someone else to get something similar to what we want. Unwilling to wait long enough for God to give us what nobody can give us. That's why some of you are in the marriages you're in. You want someone to hold your hand and kiss you on your neck. But just remember, Jesus got kissed too. Anybody can kiss. And if you need some kisses, I got a little dog who will kiss you to death. That dog's got a disorder. <laughs> Wondrous means unexpected. Abnormal, unmatched. Look at somebody and say, I'm going to go home and think of something. Honestly, I, every day I'm asking God for ideas. I'm asking God for things. You know what's going on in our nation. Give me an idea. Give me something. God can take one thing. Give you one idea that can radically change the entire world. And you can become a billionaire overnight. Do you know the guy that made the five-hour energy drink, that little bottle? He became a billionaire. Well, he's not going to, he's not going to, he's not, he's not. You do not believe the God you serve. You do not believe the God you serve. You need a revelation of the God you serve. If you can believe, all things are possible. What is all? Anything is possible. It didn't say if you have the right degree and if you went to the right school and you grew up on the right side of the family, if you have the right skin color. And being, being, you know, being a multiracial church, I'm real big on this. You can't have black and white in the church and you see yourself, well, we don't have the advantages. White people, the devil is a lie. Your mama's a lie. And whoever told you that's a lie. You have the same advantages I have because if Holy Spirit lives in you, you are advantageous immediately. If anybody wants to give, you can go to Oasis Wilmington. That's a good word for you. See, this is what I am learning. And my, my whole thing, I, I'm, re, I'm reteaching a little bit on prayer. I'm going slow with it, but I'm teaching on prayer. Now I'm, I'm, I'm this trajectory of getting you to understand faith. I don't have time to talk to you about worship. My whole idea of worship, I have to almost, I love you, I have to almost force myself to be in here and worship. Because my worship is when I come to work. My worship is with my wife. I have learned that when I'm operating where God wants me to work, my work becomes worship. If your work is not worship, you're in the wrong wheelhouse of what you're doing. Because when I'm working, I am communicating with God and I am thankful for what He's doing and what He is showing me and things that I've created and the customers that are calling. And I'm like, wow, I am constantly in worship. I am not in here trying to figure out where I'm double clapping or clapping on offbeat or... Or swaying this way, and or we all got it in the same sway. If you put me in your church, you're gonna be going this way, and I'm gonna be like going this way. I'm just honestly, the more you get close to God, I can't speak for you, the more my stomach gets sick of what people call God.
She's worship. Chasing her is worship. <laughs> ah, praise the Lord right there. Everybody say praise the Lord. How does that go? What's that little saying? Everybody say praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. God is good. That's what I'm going to start saying in the house. Uh, praise the Lord. God is good. All the time. See, when you're creating, you are in worship. And if you're wise, why are you broke? See, the the blessings of God can change and rearrange everything. You ask people, people never will say that they don't think God can. The issue is, will God? It's will God. It's not that if God's able, it's will Him. Will He do it? And that is where we are. Will God do it for me? Do I believe He will do it for me? What has God provided for me? Everything. How do we know everything? Everything that we need has already been given unto us. Now, now, now let me just ask you a question. Everybody in here, just, just let me ask you a question real quick. I am pumped right now. I was pumped this morning and I'm pumped right now. Now, I want to ask you a question. How are you getting sleepy on me right now? How? I'm just asking the question. How are you distracted on what the information, what's coming out of my mouth? How are you distracted? My wife will say, man, you know, I'm just asking a question. This stuff is life. It is not reading some book about the southern countryside. (laughs) It is life that can radically turn your world upside down by in the morning. The word says that when when he found the treasure, he sold the whole field to buy it. I mean, he sold everything he had to buy it. See, you're not at the place you're ready to sell everything and stop everything and give everything up because you have not tasted yet that God is that good. It's everything. It's inexhaustible resources. See, time has become our master because we do not operate in faith. Once you understand faith, faith is a higher level, higher level than time. When you operate in faith, time doesn't matter. When you operate in faith, you can speak to the sun and it will, well, that was a one-time thing. Okay, it may have been a one-time thing, but I may need the moon to stop. I may need the current to stop. I may need the flow of the river to stop. I may, need, I may need the motor that drops off the back of the boat to float to the top. Well, that's not going to happen. If thou can believe, all things are possible. And I know what your mind does is like my mind. That's just not going, if you can believe, all things are possible. All things are possible. Not through me, not through me, not through me. Come, let's go a little bit further. So time was to be a servant, not a master. That is so big. So how is faith activated? We're going we're to answer some questions here. Because you can't do this. We, when we get into prayer and all this stuff, listen, you can talk, you can lead prayer, you can talk prayer, but I don't, I don't need anybody to lead me in prayer. I want answers. I want solutions. I want things to start coming to pass in your life. So how is pray faith activated? Faith is activated by the word of God and you speaking it. 
It is not activated by you reading it. It is not activated by you quoting it. It is not activated by a tattoo on your arm. It is not activated by note cards. It is not activated by anything other than the word of God being spoken out of your mouth. He spoke to the rock. He spoke to the rock. What does the word say? If you will speak to the What moved the mountain? You speaking to it. You didn't move the mountain. Your righteousness didn't move the mountain. I'm, I'm jumping way ahead of myself. Does God heal today? He does not heal today. He's already healed. When the woman had the issue of the blood, he said, your faith. God is not healing you. Your faith in God heals you. And you're wanting God to heal you. You're wanting God to deliver you. You're wanting God to fix you. When he clearly said, your faith has healed you. Not someone else's faith. Now, we go get into five levels of faith. There are other people's faith that can heal you. But if I've got to depend on most people to heal me, I'm in trouble. Listen, listen, listen. No, no, let's talk here. If I got to depend on a black person to heal me and they still think their skin color is causing them to be inadequate and not get ahead and they're not privileged enough, you cannot touch God for me in healing. Because you don't even believe your skin color has any advantage. And because you don't have enough education, I can't get you to pray for me because you don't even believe your education or lack of it can get God to do anything for you because you're not good enough. You haven't studied hard enough. You're not a 4.0 GPA. Listen, God doesn't care anything about your 4-point GPA. Hello? What is faith? Three things we go answer. What is faith? How faith comes? And how to release faith? Do you know any of those? What have you set your faith on? What have you set your faith on? What did Ruth believe God for? A husband. Hello. Y'all with me, right? This is so good right here. What did God, what did Ruth believe God for? A husband. But it wasn't a broke-ass husband. He wasn't broke. See, some of you just want a husband, and you don't care if they're broke or not. You just want a husband. But if you go ask God for a husband, you might as well ask God for a husband with some money. Hey! Hey! You just want a job. But if you go ask God for a job, you might as well get a job that has benefits and the best pay that's available. Oh, God, you just give me a job. I need to work, Lord. Your word says if I don't work, I'm as an infidel. I want to be a CEO. I want to be a, the FPO. I want to be what God's called me to be. But no, I'm just glad. I'm just glad to have a job. Well, you misused your faith. Huh? Lord, I want a woman that's thick. I want a woman that's got some legs. I want a woman, Father, that knows. Uh, Lord, you know what I want, Lord. <laughs> huh? No, you just want, you just, you just, I can't get anything. I'm just, I'm just going, I, Lord, Lord, even, even the dogs want a crumb. See, some of you want crumbs because you, so, because you do not know who you are in God. So see, what you don't realize, when I leave out of here today, I'm going to get something to eat, and I'm going to go get on my jet, and I'm flying somewhere. Now, I know what all you're saying. Well, he ain't got no jet. You just don't know. The jet is waiting on me to bring it into existence. Because I do have a word for some people out there. It may not be for a lot but it's for a couple that God just, it, it, they're so far and few between, I got to go all over to get just a handful. 
He told me he talking about he got get he got a jet. Now, I saw him pull up in here in a Honda Odyssey. I ain't no jet. Don't worry about it. You don't see what I see, huh? Oh, 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 oh. We gotta go. We gotta go. If you go set your faith on something, make it worthwhile. <laughs> I'm tired of settling. Lord, we just need another building. We just need some place, Father, it's a little bit bigger. No, Lord, why don't we have this and this and this and this and this and this? Why don't you see it? Why don't I see it? Well, I, I just, you know, why, why would God do that? Why does a king live in a castle? Because he can. <laughs> <laughs> now you got to understand something because we always want to preface it. I, I'm not trying to navigate it and say, well, what about this and what about that? Listen, my whole purpose of what I do is so people can see God. Yes, now, whatever you got to do it and however you want it, and you want and, and you still need out of boys and all that, you're gonna have to work all that out. I don't care. God will work it out with you as you go along. I want people to see that this thing works and God's good and and it is beyond. It is beyond human comprehension. Does that make sense? So when I said, does God heal today? So many times in Scripture, God says, because of your faith. It is because of your faith. Your faith. If you can believe, all things are possible. Well, I don't think God, I don't know why God's not. Without faith, it is impossible to believe or it is impossible to please God. We talked about last week, Hebrews, I mean, Hebrews 11, 1, faith is the substance of things fo- hoped for. The substance of things hoped for, what is hope? Hope is vision. You can't have faith to work in your life until first you have a vision of what you want the faith to do. If you don't see yourself prosperous, if you don't see yourself at the top of the food chain, if you don't see yourself healed, then you have nothing for that faith to bring into materialization. Faith has to see the blueprint in your mind and follow the blueprint in your, in your hope. And he builds faith and Holy Spirit builds the blueprint you see. Am I over your head? Are you with me? All the praying, all the stuff you do, it, 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 that's not what it's about. So, so faith believes the impossible and sees the invisible. Are you seeing the impossible? I mean, are you seeing the invisible and are you believing the impossible? It is so easy to believe what you can do or what you, who you know can do it for you. So where does, wilt, where does wealth and riches reside? Where does it reside? Oh, look at me like, hold on, tell me the answer, hey. Here we say, tell me the answer. Where does it reside? In your mouth. But you're speaking faith, but where, where, where is it? You're speaking, but where is it residing? Let's look at it. Let's look at Psalms 112.3. Is that in your, in your paperwork? We'll throw that up there. Psalms 112.3. Now, you saw me come in here, and you saw me pull this up here, right? If you saw this. Did anybody, when I first came up here, did anybody see this sitting on the, on the, where did that come from? Where did that come from? Did I work to get it? Did I do anything to get it? I spoke the word, and the word is materializing. Is that, I mean, that's how it works. Praise the Lord. Here it is. Great blessing and wealth fills the house of the wise. If you read another translation, it says wealth and riches are in his house. Where's wealth and riches? It's in your house. If it's not in your house, what's the problem? What's the problem? What's the problem if it's not there? So when we use faith, 
Let me tell you this. Let me tell you this. This is so good. When you use faith, let me tell you three things when you use faith to what happens. When you use faith, it will bring what you need to you. It will take you to where it, what you need or it will create it. That's a win-win situation. When you use faith, it will take what you're believing for and bring it to you or it will take you to it or it will create it. <laughs> Yo, y'all like hey, what's I can't it, it's, it's, it's mine So God is going to bring it to me Or it, He's going to take me to it Or He's going to create it But it is mine What's mine? Every inexhaustible resource That is in heaven is mine. If I want, to, where is it residing? In me, which is in Holy Spirit, but it's residing in heaven, correct? Heaven be like earth, right? So if it's in heaven, I got to have the mind of Christ. That's why the renewing of the mind is so important. I got to have the mind of Christ to understand what's there, to see what's there, and then be able to, to take the situation I'm in and say in this resource, it's like when you, when you have the puzzle and you put the round peg and the square peg and the star and all that, you see the situation and you speak what you know is in heaven into that situation and it solves that problem. If you don't have the mind of Christ, which you can't have it unless you have a renewed mind, the renewed mind will speak what God says. God's in you. You have to speak. He says, we just read it a while ago. He says, when you speak what I say, I stand over it to perform what I say. Don't speak what you see. Don't speak what you feel. You speak what he says. Speak to the rock. I'm not speaking to that rock. Speak to yourself and say, I'm healed. But I'm not healed. Speak to your marriage. My marriage is beyond help. Speak to your children. Well, I'm not speaking to have their own individual. I don't want to persuade them. I'm not persuading them. I'm speaking God's word. And God's word says, you will. I said this Tuesday night in prayer about, about Heather's dad. You know, I'm seeing some change in him. I'm, I'm praying for his salvation. You speak to the lost person and say, you're saved in Jesus' name. But he's not saved. If you can believe. When I see it, I believe. That's what the word says. You got to see the situation and say, that's not what God says. And you speak what God says, not what you see, not what you feel, not what you've experienced, not what others told you. And because of the lack of faith in us, we will not say in front of everybody, did you get the account? Oh, yeah, we got it. Why? Well, what if it don't come to pass? What will I say if we don't get it? I don't want to speak too quickly. I have dominion. Not over people. But everything up to man's creation. He says you are going to replenish the earth. We are, the, we are, we are Saul's army that everybody's out, the, the Goliaths are out shouting, and we're like, oh, my God. Oh, my God. And here comes a David. What is going on here? <laughs> and Saul tried to put armor on David. David says, I am, I'm not skilled in man's way of doing it. I'm skilled in being out there in the intimacy of God. I haven't, I haven't reworked with this stuff, but I know what God says. And he spoke. Today, what did he speak? He says, I'm about to cut your head off, Jack. Your head is mine. He was speaking the way God spoke. Well, I don't think you can speak that way. Well, you don't know God. 
I think Exodus 3 says his name is warrior. We don't like shaming, right? We all oh, don't, don't shame. Can I tell you, if you read in the New Testament, it says that God shamed the enemy. I believe he shanked him and put his little pants down. And he, <laughs> Come on, boy. He walked him in front of everybody. I have disarmed. I have disabled. I have shanked this boy. He has nothing on you. There is no power in the devil. Zero except what you put in it. This is good stuff. See, religion keeps us in time, but faith governs time. You need to write that down. Religion keeps us in time, but favor governs time. Let's look at Isaiah 51, 1 through 3. We good? Are you learning something? Let me pause. Are you learning? Okay. One through three. To me. Hearken to me. Ye that follow after righteousness, you seek the Lord unto the rock whence you were hewn, and the hole of the pit which you were digged. Look unto Abraham your father and unto Sarah that bear you. For I called him alone and blessed him. Listen. I called him. Blessed him. Remember what blessing? Four things in blessing. Right? I blessed him and I increased him. When you got born again, you were called, you were blessed, and you are to increase. Now, why are we 20 years later? You know what I'm tell you why? Religion. Lack of identity. Traditions of men. Listen, let's go on. This. I didn't even a good part of the verse. I just saw that as I was reading it. For the Lord shall comfort Zion, he will comfort all her waste places, and he will make her wilderness like Eden and her desert like the garden. Why do you still have a weed patch? Why do you still have ruined places? Why do you still have addictions? Why are you still struggling? God says, I've come to make everything new. And gladness shall be found therein in thanksgiving in the voice of medley. And I have put my words in your mouth. I didn't ask you to pray. I didn't. And, and listen, let me help you with prayer. I'm not interested in you praying. I'm interesting, interesting in you as a king declaring what God says. Hypocrites love to pray. We like talking. Put my words in my mouth, and I have covered thee in the shadow of my hand. Uh-oh, uh-oh, uh-oh. That I may plant the heavens and lay the foundations of the earth and say unto Zion, Thou art my people. You are the sower. You are the seed sower. You are the cloud seeder. You are. The word, you are to plant the heavens and it is to reign the kingdom of God. This is over some heads. I can tell somewhere else. Oh. Who is the planter and who in the sower? See, remember, Adam fell from grace to works. He was in grace and he fell to works. Religion has kept us when we got saved. It keeps us in works. So let's look at Job 32, 6 through 8. You ready? Well, this is in your paperwork. When Eluhu, son of Berechel, the Buzziite, said, I am young and you are aged. For that reason, I was timid and restrained and dared not to declare my opinion to you. I said, age? Should speak, and a multitude of years should teach wisdom, so let it be heard. But there is a vital force, a spirit of intelligence in man, and the breath of the Almighty gives him understanding. Pretty good, right? Eh. Read the message. This is what Elihu, son of Barakel, the Buzite, said, Buzi. 
I am a young man and you are old and experienced. That's why I kept quiet and held back from joining the discussion. I kept thinking, experience will tell. The longer you live, the wiser you become. But I see I was wrong. I have come to realize there are ministers and pastors and churches that you think they should be wise, but I have come to realize the Archbishop of England was wrong. Notice, I was wrong. It is God's Spirit in a person. The breath of the Almighty One that makes a wise human insight possible. The experts have no corner on wisdom. Getting old doesn't guarantee good sense. So I've decided to speak up and listen well. Oh, that is so good. You know why the Lord has me in entrepreneurship? Because I could not work for most people. And it's not because I need to be in charge or be the boss. And you know why I got out of the military in five years, in, in, in the fifth year? Because I realized half of, these, half of these little whippersnappers ain't leading me nowhere. I wouldn't go into battle. I wouldn't go into anything with most people. Because of the ignorance in leadership. I don't care what badge they put on you and what insignia. I'm not following anybody that cannot lead their life. Leadership is seen, not heard. Leadership is not appointed. Leadership is influence that is developed. And you would say, I will follow that person anywhere, wherever they go. I don't know why you're here. But I'm telling you. I lead my wife well. I lead my family well. I'm not talking about perfect. But I'm telling you, the blessings of God, the goodness of God, the things of God are supposed to be. And the reason I'm leading us into this, this other area, because I believe you should be the most wealthiest people on earth. I believe every one of you has the potential to be millionaires. Billionaires. I believe every one of you have the potential to lead and influence. Is it going to happen to every single one of you? Absolutely not. Because if you can't believe it, if you can't speak it, it will not happen. I see you in heaven. But I'm just going to be passing by because I'm not hanging out. I have no, I'm just telling you, I have no, I have no desire to be in heaven at all. I'm going to go up. Thank my God. Man, I love you. I appreciate you. Now put me on assignment. Y'all with me? Adam named all the animals. How? Think about this. Adam named all the animals. And he didn't go to the University of Chapel Hill. Oh my God. Oh my God. He didn't go to Central. Oh, no, he didn't go to Virginia or ECU. He didn't go to the all black colleges. He didn't go to Duke. Oh, and he sure didn't go to Georgia. But yet he had no degree in any of this. And he named all the animals with precision. How? How? How did he do it? Do you, you don't have, y'all don't ask questions. He had the creative force. He was not learned, but he discerned. He had the mind of God, and he knew how God thought and how God would name it. He discerned the mind of God and spoke what God said. Was it his words? He wouldn't know what a... I mean, oh, I would need Roman to tell me what some of the words are. I mean, I, I, I mean, a dodo bird. I mean, and I mean, all the animals and the insects and the bugs. He named them all. Adam just sat there and said, 
Oh, that's a walking stick. That's a praying mantis. That right there is a cow ant. That right there is a zebra. That right. How did he come up with this? It wasn't him. God, he did, God didn't say, well, you just name them and whatever you do. No, he had the mind. He was made in the nature, the likeness. God spoke to himself. And when he spoke to himself, it replicated him. And you are God speaking on behalf of God. Y'all not hearing what I'm saying. That's why all of our prayers is horse. Because we speak intellectually, we speak from our learned behavior and our and our and our scholastic ability, but we never speak spirit. What does God say? I don't know if that's God. Well, you don't know your God like then. Or is this helping anybody other than? Oh, we good. We good. Are we good for a little more? We good. I won't see you to, unless Tuesday night or next week. So we good. See, he was not learned. It was it was discerned. Yeah, I'm almost done. We're gonna finish this one today because I got I got two more messages stacked up on this one, but I had to get this one laid so you'd understand the other ones. Does that make sense? So what is faith? Let me tell you what faith is. Faith is, remember I taught this a long time, faith is a title deed. How do you know you own something? Okay, let's look. I, I don't know who would be in here. Um, I'm going to use someone. I'm going to use, I think you, not in, a, not in a negative way, but I'm going to use you. Do you have a title to your car? Not yet. Okay? She doesn't have a title to her car. What does that mean? It's, she doesn't own it yet. Faith is a title deed. Faith is you own it. If you don't own it, it's not faith. Y'all with me? Faith is ownership of what you decree and what you're praying for. Does that make sense? Okay. So, how does faith come? It comes by the Word of God. It is hearing, but it is... Well, it answers in the next one. So, faith comes by knowing God, not all the Bible... All the Bible is not the Word of God. It may be the inspired Word of God. But a lot of what goes on in, in the Bible is stories and examples, but it is not God's divine spirit word. And you got to know the difference in that. Just like all the Old Testament is not law. Probably need to go back over that sometime. So how do I turn faith loose? You speak it and you act on it. Okay. So let me give you an example. When I ask Daniel and Bree, did you have the account? She had an interview. She had a Zoom interview uh, for a job that they called. I said, do you have the account? Not yet. We'll find out. We don't know. I hope so. I don't know what all they said. I'm just saying that. Faith says, I have the account. Well, I don't want to lie. Well, faith is the title deed. Why don't I speak it? Well, what if it's, what if, what if? I'm just saying that's how it is. Don't worry about, well, what if, what if we don't get it? Don't worry about it. You will not get it if you don't believe you have it. You speak what you believe is yours. Oh, you think we can... Uh, Take the Ukraine? Think we can get that? Are we going to have to fight for it? Well, no, I don't want to go to war and get that. You have got to decree and declare that's part of mine. You can't get out of debt. You can't get your car. It's almost. It's sometimes. I'm almost out of debt. I'm healed. I'm almost healed. I'm believing for healing. God's going to heal me. God's going to do nothing. If you're waiting on God's going to, it's going to go right by you. There is no God's going to. He says everything that you have to live this life is already provided for you. You must believe it and speak it. I don't have time to go back and talk to you about the woman with the issue of blood. She spent all of her money. She was in the worst condition. And she said to herself, 
She talked to herself. She spoke to herself. And then she went out and did what she said. And God said, your faith. What was she saying? When she was saying to herself, what was she doing? She was meditating. She kept saying it and saying it and saying it until it was like, this is going to happen. This is going to happen. We don't know how long she said it, but she, it, she, she said it long enough that she believed it. See, the problem is you've not said it long enough to believe it because you don't say it at all. Thinking it has no power. When you open your mouth and speak it, everybody, it says that heaven and earth witness what you just said. You are now in a situation where, hmm, that was a big statement right there. Yeah, you got to back that one up right there. I don't have to back anything up. He said it, and he stands guard over it. I just speak it. An ambassador is not the president. He just speaks on behalf of the president. I'm telling you what the president wants. I'm telling you what God said. You're not going to get this all today, I know. But I am planning and sowing, I'm cloud seeding here, faith, that you have got and I have got, I have got to get to the place that what you want, where you are and what you want and what you need and what God's called upon you, that you can start speaking it and believe it. I don't believe we should speak it in sarcasm. I don't believe we should speak it in arrogance. I don't believe we, could, we should speak it smarty in a smart aleck way. I don't believe any of that. I believe we should just start decreeing with our mouth what God says. And it would save me so much of time because I don't need to be praying for you. It doesn't say praying for you to do it. I don't mind. I pray for you guys. I hope you pray for me. But I don't. if you don't, I, it's good. Oh, Dad, my day didn't go good. Somebody didn't pray for me. No, my day went good. Are you all with me? We've got a little bit more here. So what is faith? It's the title deed. It's the substance. How does faith come? By the word of God. How do I turn faith loose? I speak it. I act on it. If you're not speaking it and you're not acting on it, guess what you're doing? You're sitting on it. How much word are you sitting on? Some of you got a big spiritual kabonka bonk. I know. Some of you got a big spiritual booty. That's what it is. You've been sitting on so much word. You just sit on it. You sit on it. You don't act on it. You don't work on it. This, I, I'm just helping. I, I'm just. I'm just being honest. I am, don't, I don't, please, I'm, and I'm just, and I probably shouldn't say it like this. Please don't come up quoting scripture and tell me what God says. Just do it and let me see it work in your life, and then I know you got it. Don't, imp you can't impress me with something. Well, you know, I'm believing, I, I'm, God said this. No, no, let me see your wallet. Let me see your checkbook. Let me see something. I want proof, not your mouth. Does this make sense? It's years ago when, when, when I was a little bit more popular, you'd preach a message and everybody would come up, well, you know, you know God, you know, and they want to sit here and, and I got to listen to people tell me what God's saying. Let me see the evidence of it. I don't care what you're hearing. I don't care what you're dreaming. Show me evidence of what you're talking about. I got, I got five levels of faith. Five levels of faith. One, no faith. I'm not going to give you the references on these. You can find them, and later on, maybe I'll give them to you. Number one, no faith. It's in Matthew. I'll give you that. There's no faith. Number two, there's little faith. Number three, there's strong faith. Number four, there's great faith. And number five, there's dauntless faith or crazy faith. So there's five levels of faith. Listen to me. It is no harder for God to heal you than it was for him to save you. It's no harder for God to deliver you than it was for God to save you. It's no, hard, no harder for God to prosper you than it was for him to save you. Think about that. 
It's like God can save us, but he can't do anything else. Where did this dumb thinking come from? We don't question God's saving us. We don't question God's forgiveness. We, don't, we, we question how righteous we are, and we question all this. We start then start diminishing in our belief. If God saved you, everything else is equal to the salvation. There's no sin he can't forgive. There's no sickness. There's no hay fever. There's no runny nose. A runny nose is no different than level 15 cancer to God. It's all been taken care of. So, I'm going to leave you with this to think about and we'll come back next week. So God told, God told, he come up, was it Peter that was in the boat? He said, Peter, let's go out into the deep water. Right? He said, let's go out into the deep water. So he went out into the deep water, and Jesus did teaching. And Jesus then said, cast your nets into the water. Peter said, I have fished all night. Was it nighttime when they're fishing? When Jesus was in the boat or daytime? So therefore... To cut, throw nets out, you do it at night. They were in daytime. Wrong time to fish. Wrong time to fish. They fished all night, which was the right time, and caught no fish. Now it's the wrong time to fish, and he says, put out your nets. Not one net, but nets. He says, at your word. Now notice this. Before it was logos, when you study the word out, it was logos, it was generic, it was information. Now he says it's your word, and that word word is rhema, which means revelation. That's why Paul said in Ephesians 1, 17 through 19, I pray that you have a revelation. It never works until you have a revelation. You hear what I'm saying? He says, at your word, we'll cast it out. So he cast out the net, right? And it says when he cast out the net, which he should have had nets, but he cast out the net. It said there were so many fish. One translation, one, one particular, another uh, gospel says there was 153 fish. Where did the fish come from? They fished all night and there were no fish. Now they're fishing and got an overload. Where did the fish come from? Just hang on to it. Let's think about it. Where did the fish come from? So we have, Eli, we have Elijah going to, the, going to the lady and says, fix me a meal. And she says, I just have enough. He said, bring me what you have. And he made that. And the lady, there's another one there with the lady that had oil. He said, go and get all the vessels for the oil. And they started pouring the oil into the vessels and filling them up. Right? Where did the oil come from? It couldn't have come out the vessel. The vessel was a container. So how do you get the container? It said that the oil came through the vessel. You were called before the foundations of the world. I want to suggest to you that the 153 fish was waiting on someone to believe and to call it forth. It was already there. The oil, everything God has is not materializing here. It's already in heaven. And when you speak it, it comes through you to materialize. The fish were all sitting back there. We've been waiting for a long time. I'm getting old. I've been in this tank right here. Somebody's supposed to come and cast down some nets. It was probably about six or seven hundred fish, but only a hundred fifty. You get the. But he said nets. He said cast out the nets, but he only cast out one. So that means there's more fish waiting on someone. There's more oil waiting because she ran out of jugs. That's the only reason. There was more oil, but the oil wasn't in the container. It was coming through. When you speak 
faith and the word, it opens the portal or the spiritual wormhole into the kingdom of God and it will flow and materialize whatever your faith has spoken. You were called before the foundations of the world. Jesus knew it before the foundation. There is nothing new going on. It has all been pre-designed, pre-engineered, and pre-planned sitting right there on you for you to faith. God will move Google to Burgall, North Carolina if you can believe it. God ain't Google ain't. God will move AT&T to Blueberry Road if you can believe it. That's not, it's not going to happen because you do not believe it. He says, is there anything too hard for me? Am I willing? If I will move Washington, D.C. to Wassa if I need to, that will never happen. All God's got to do is just drop a few ideas on a few people's mind and they say, I put a vote on it. And they think it's their idea and it was God dropped the idea on them all because you prayed it into existence. And God says, I stand behind my word and you know exactly what I need to bring that to you. Are you getting the account? I don't know. And if you don't believe it, and you can't speak it, and you got to wait to see it and hear it, it's not faith. Faith is we walk by, we walk by the Spirit and not by sight. I don't need a phone call to tell me. Uh, we just want to let you know we chose you for our accountant. It's not what the Word says. Well, I know. I've already, I already been told. Well, who told you? Who told you? Faith told me. I know you thinking that I'm trying to be hyperbole, have hyperbole, there's another word, or hyperbolistic. You think that I am trying, you're like, you're just pushing stuff way out there. No, I serve a God who is wondrous. And what he does cannot be defined. It cannot be matched. It cannot be... It, 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 it is impossible to understand. This is how big God is, and this is how religion has dwindled our God down to such little stuff that we just, we want a crumb. We just want a crumb. Lord, I need a crumb. I need a crumb. I just, I need this, God. I need a crumb. It's pathetic. It's pathetic. He didn't die to give you crumbs. He didn't die for you to sit and wait. He didn't die for this. He died to give you all. See, what was Peter? What was Jesus? What was the woman? They're distributors. A distributor is not a manufacturer. A distributor is not a maker. It's already made in heaven God is just need you to distribute it onto the earth. And he will bring it in depending on how big your distribution house is. He will bring in all the inexhaustible resources into the resource house. If he knows you know how to distribute it and get it out. Let me pray. Stand with me. It's a good word. Father, we thank you for your word. You showed us what to speak, how to speak. 